The herd bull selection is very important because he's half of every calf you sell. And as we get these calves on the ground and we talk about quality and consistency in the beef industry, we've got to have some superior sires because that's where our, our improvement and our genetic is going to come from. You realize that, that the last three bulls that you've bought and put in that cow herd, if you've saved the daughters of those, that's, seven, that's 87 and a half percent of all the genetics in that cow. So we're, we've got a, uh, an opportunity through the selection of the right bulls to really improve the genetics. The unfortunate thing about the cattle business is, is the generation interval is a little bit longer than it is in rabbits and hogs and chickens, so it takes us a little more time to really do our job in genetic improvement. But we can make improvement, we've got to make improvement, we've got to improve the quality and consistency of these calves. There's a lot of management things that we can do to the calves and those have been covered elsewhere, but today we want to talk about the genetics. The thing that we want, to, we want out of these bulls is we want to improve the genetics of the cows on which they're used. And in most people's cases, they're going to be saving replacement heifers out of those bulls that are half sisters to the steers that'll go to the feedlot. And that is good because the, we've got to remember that these cattle operate in a biological environment. They are a biological system. And it so happens the ideal weight for a market steer, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 and a half to 12 and a half, that'll be the same weight at which those cows mature. So we want to remember that in the size of bulls, the frame of bulls that we select. The frame size on these cattle, when, when we put that down to an actual frame size, it comes back to a frame five or six uh, calf. That'll, uh, we can take the frame size and add seven to it, multiply it by 100, and that'll give us the weight at which that calf is expected to reach the choice grade. And of course, that's plus or minus 50 pounds because there is some variation in the way uh, these cattle will finish and feed and grade. I think the second thing that we've really got to look at in these bulls is that we've got to look at calving ease. We've got to look at how easy that cow can have that calf. Uh, we've got to work on this birth weight thing. If we remember that the birth weight of the calf should never exceed about 8% of the cow's weight, so we can, or 7% of the cow's weight. And then sometimes we can go up to 8% and not get in any trouble. But if we've got a set of 900 pound cows, of which there are some left, we can't breed to one of these 2,600 pound bulls and make that work. So we've got to keep the frame size of the cow and the frame size of the bull within that biological parameter that's set up for us by our grass and our fields and our pastures uh, for, these, for the cow size and also the parameters which the feedlot and the packing industry sets up for us for the uh, size of these, uh, these market steers. Now, the one thing that we've learned over the last few years is that these smaller frame cattle generally do not grow as, a, as fast as the larger frame cattle. And that's the, why we had the trend through the 80s and 90s to larger frame cattle. The only thing is when we reach the biological limits of the, of the grasslands and of the packing industry and of the consumers, when we put those stakes on the table, we got them too big. So we've got to back these cattle down and put them in there at where everything fits in this biological system and all these systems fit together. The thing that we know that will really work today is that we've got to select these cattle for growth. Uh, that means selecting these cattle that will grow rapidly. Not, it's not how big they get, it's how quick they get big. There's frequent uh, frequently 20 cents a pound difference in the cost of gain in the cattle and the ranch to rail program. Uh, steers that come in weighing the same, some of them grow at two and a half pounds a day and some of them gain at four pounds a day. And the thing of it is, it's the genetics. And the genetics that go into this bull selection, and we can do that in a number of different ways. We've got to use the EPDs. And I'd suggest to you that the EPDs are more accurate than any set of figures that we can put on to a bull's individual performance. I think that bull's individual performance is, equal, is important. 
I think we bought a select bulls that are above average in their weaning weight ratio and their yearling weight ratio and select cattle on these ratios. But at the same time, the EPDs are more accurate in saying where that bull will eventually wind up uh, in his genetic offspring. So if we select these cattle that have got a genetic potential for growth, rapid growth, not extreme growth because we've got to maintain the mature size. In maintaining the mature size at an acceptable level for these feedlot steers and these cows in the pasture, it'll also help us on the birth weight situation. And I think we, we, all these things fit together to make this a pretty compatible uh, situation if we'll work all ends together. I think there's two or three other things in bull selection that are uh, of utmost importance. Number one is that I think we've got to really analyze these bulls for structural soundness. I think that uh, as you look at these bulls, they've got to have some slope in their shoulders, some slope in their pasterns, some angle in their hock. We've got to put these cattle together where they can walk with some cushion and some flexibility in their joints. If they don't, they don't last long because when we put those joints straight up and down, we get that cartilage rubbing against and we get that cartilage torn up in those joints and we get these bulls that go unsound. And so for the longevity of the bull, for the longevity of the cow, uh, and, and make these cattle work over a longer period of time, we've got to get away from the straight shouldered, straight hock cattle that we've, we've come to accept in the last few years. They don't last as long in the pasture if they are, they're straight in their joints. They've got to have flexibility and freedom of movement. These cattle that are restricted in their movement by being too straight in their shoulder, take these little short, choppy strides, they don't work very well because uh, they, they eventually they wear out in those joints and that cartilage, when it wears out, it's bone against bone. When we get that, we get some aggravation, we get an increased blood supply to that area in an effort to repair it. When we get that, we get arthritis set up because of the calcium deposits. So you've all seen the the stifled cattle, the cattle that are straight in their hocks that come unsound in their joints, we've got to work on the soundness on these cattle. Another thing that I think is of utmost importance in this bull selection is that that's where we add the muscle to the cattle is through the bulls. These cattle that have got some meat and muscle, they've got the muscular turn over their top, they've got some muscle in their, in their hip, in their hind leg, and if we find a bull that's got muscle in one place, believe me, it's distributed throughout his body in equal proportions to the next bull. Because what I'm saying is that we can't change the percentage of muscle in one area of the body without changing it equally in other portions of the body. And I think that, that too many times we accept these cattle that are not deep enough in their quarter. They don't, they don't pull that round down toward the hock they don't have enough length through the stifle, they don't have enough muscular turn over the top. Uh, consequently, we get a lot of those cattle that, that don't have enough meat and muscle in them. Uh, conversely, I think we can get these cattle that have got too much muscle. When we get these 16, 18, 20 inch rib eyes, they're too large to put on the plate. So, but I think we just need to be sure that these cattle are adequate in their muscling. They show some indication of muscling and length through their stifle. Uh, in thickness through the stifle, uh, in turn over the top, and thickness out through that rump. And if we put the meat and the muscle in these bulls, they're going to genetically transmit that. It's an interesting thing is that every calf, the amount of muscling in a calf's body is determined at conception. That genetics that goes into that muscling, into that calf, uh, determines his muscling and his genetic makeup for life. So there's a lot of things that go into these bulls uh, from the uh, from the EPDs and the perform individual performance on these cattle, from the structural soundness standpoint, from the calving ease standpoint, from the muscling standpoint, if we select these good beef bulls that'll go out and do the job on a set of cows, and of course their first job is to impregnate those cows. So we've got to check the testicular and scrotal size on these bulls to be sure that that they uh, have the equipment and the factory necessary to breed the cow. You know, the uh, scrotal size on bulls is, is uh, really coming to prominence in the last few years. It's very important from the standpoint that, that the younger in life that that bull develops an adequate testicular development, uh, the younger in life his daughters will reach maturity, sexual maturity, and they'll come in and, and cycle earlier in life. 
Uh, the standard for the industry has been about 29 centimeters or about 11 and a half inches on 12 month old bulls that are adequately developed and weigh 950 to 1100 at a year of age. Some bulls will have 34, 36. I know ranchers that will not buy a bull that is less than 34 centimeters at a year of age. And consequently in doing that, they have lowered the age at which these heifers reach puberty and so they can get these heifers bred when they're 14 months of age, get them in cycle with the cow herd, and it's a management tool that works all the way down the line. For every centimeter larger, the scrotal measurement on a yearling bull, his daughters will reach puberty four days earlier. And I think that's a real important economic thing when we look at these bulls. Uh, I think we've got to look at the scrotal size and development uh, to be sure that they have not only the equipment, but genetically they're passing on and transmitting that ability to mature early, and they pass that on to the daughters. These are some of the things that I think really uh, bear strong consideration in herd bull selection. I'd like to say one other thing about the breeds, because uh, I know that there are people that, that say, well, what breed of bull should I buy to put on my cow? Well, I think that there are good cattle and sorry cattle in every breed. Half of them are below average in every breed. So it doesn't make any difference about the breed that you select. If you want red cattle, there's a number of those breeds. If you want black cattle, there's a number of those breeds. Uh, the thing of it is, we've got to select the good cattle that have these things we've talked about in structural soundness and scrotal development in uh, uh, Cavanese and muscling, those are the things that are important. 